Hey students, today we are in lesson 5-6 and it is you sharing to divide greater dividends. Here is our learning goal, I can divide greater dividends. So make sure you have your workbook and your pencil and we are going to get started with our solve and share. We are on page 201, so please open this up, to your workbook up to 201. If you don't have it, pause the video here and go get it. All right, you need to be following along. Okay, here's our solvent chair. The city built a skate park that cost $3,240 and will be paid over two years in equal monthly payments. How much is each monthly payment? Use objects or draw pictures to help you solve this problem. Really, you can do it whichever, however, whatever way you want. Um, you can use that little box method. You could use the hybrid method or even just our standard uh, method with our does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers. So I'm gonna pause it here and you can give it a try. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, I know my total cost or my dividend is going to be the 3,240. That's the, the total lump sum that I want to split up. And when I'm reading in the uh, problem, we'll be paid for, uh, for over two years and equal monthly payments. So there are 12 months in one year. So in two months, we're going to have 24. So I need to divide it up by 24. I'm gonna model this first with just our standard method. Um, so we'll have our does, McDonald's, sell, cheese, burgers, bring down. Okay, so we get 3,240 divided by 24. Okay, and so remember, we gotta go through this process um, slowly and go step by step. So will 24 divide into a smaller number three? Nope, it won't. So we're still on that division step. Will 24 go into 32? Well, yes it will. How many times? So here's where I need to go. 24, 48, whoop, two is already too big. So I know it's only gonna go in one time. We put our 24 there and we subtract. Can't do two take away four, so I'm gonna regroup two minus, or 12 minus four is eight. Two take away two is zero. I check, so now I'm on check. Is eight less than 24? Yes, it is, so we're good to move on. Now I need to bring down my uh, four, and we have 84. So I'm gonna keep doing my multiples to see, because 48, that's not enough. So if I add another 24 to that, 24, 48, um, so I can just do my plus 24, because you probably don't have 24 in your multiplication chart. So um, another way, I'm gonna show you this real quick. Um, instead of just having to list the multiples off to the side, so we had 24, 48, you can use a little bit of an estimation. I always call it like covering up part of the number, cover up method. So if we cover up our four here and cover up our four here, I'm doing the ones place in both of them. How many times would two go into eight? So two, four, six, eight, four times. So now we're gonna do 24 times four. So we go back to the whole divisor. We multiply it by four. This is our like jumping off point, right? So we might have to go a little up, might have to go a little down, but this is where we're gonna start. So four times four is 16, four times two is eight, plus one is nine. Whoop, we are a little too high. So then, I mean, honestly, listing our multiples would have been good too, but um, we can do 24 times three, and four times three is 12, three times two is six, plus one more is seven, we get 72. So I'm gonna put my three up here, 24 times three, I've already done that math, is 72, and I'm gonna subtract. I'm gonna subtract. Four take away two is two, eight minus seven is one, and I check, is 12 less than 24? Yeah, it's half of it. So now I'm ready to bring down this zero, okay. So when we're working with bigger numbers and we went, when I have a number that I'm dividing into, so remember we kind of ignore shoop, all that's going on up there. And now we're just starting over with my divide here, 24 into 120. And when your number ends in zero, you can think, okay, what number when I multiply by that, um, the answer or product ends in zero. Well, fives and tens are, gonna fives half the time will give you numbers that end in zero and tens. So we can again do our cover up method and, and see about how many times so we can get close. But also keeping in mind five might be the best um, the best guess here. 
So when I cover up my two and my 12, how many times would 24 go into 12? Well, uh, or how many times would two go into 12, which would be six. So we could try 24 times six and see what we get. We might have to go down to five. So six times four is 24. Six times two, 12 plus two more. 13, 14, 144, we are too big. So what do we have to do? We gotta go down to five, just like I warned you because that's zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase, erase, erase. We're going to do 24 times five, four times five, ooh, 20. We get that zero, that's what we want. Five times two is 10, plus two more is 12, 120. So it goes in five times. So we put our five up in our quotient. We did that multiplication, 24 times five. So then now we're gonna subtract our 120 and it zeroes out. There you go. So $135 every single month for two years. There you are. Let's go ahead and um, talk through our virtual learning bridge. Jake works at a flower shop. Maybe that's Mr. Tomasich, do you think? Probably, no, he doesn't. <laughs> the shop just received a delivery of 1,830 roses. If the roses are distributed evenly among 15 coolers, how many roses did Jake put in the cooler? So we can use place value and area models to solve this problem. You can also use the standard method or that hybrid method, um, whatever is working best for you. So we have our 1,000. We have 800s, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we've got 30, 10, 20, 30, um, 10. So this is the example of how many roses Jake has. Okay, so what they're modeling with here is, this is like that box method, but they had to add on a little bit because they're, um, it, it wasn't enough to just break it up by two. So what they did here, um, they, B says there are not enough thousands to put 1,000 in each group. So regroup the thousands into hundreds. So the first thing they did was 15 times 100 to get 1,500. So they put the 15 coolers and then they have 1,500 here and they know times 100. So then they have to take their total amount of roses and subtract the 1,500 from it and they get 330. Okay. But they're, when they do 15 times 20, they get 300. So the 300 goes here and the 20 goes up top. And then they take their 330, take away 300, they have 30 left over. So here's where they have to add on to that. What we've had is a box with one little category. Now they've got a third because our numbers got bigger. So if I do um, 15 into 30, it's gonna go in two times. And so now I can add together this guy to see how much is gonna be in each cooler. Well, 100 plus 20 plus two is 122. All right, and they do the same thing over here and just what they're doing with the numbers rather than like writing them like 100, 20, and two, like we have before, they're kind of combining them all together, which is getting a little bit more towards that standard method. So they put 15 into 100 or 1,830, um, 100 times. So they got 1,500 because they added the two zeros. There's the 330. It's the exact same thing they did over here. And then they put 15 into 330 20 times. So then that's the red two right there in the tenths place. Subtracted the 300. And then they had to put 15 into 30 just two times, which is 30, and it zeroes out. So we get the 122 roses in each cooler. Okay, so we are gonna practice through a couple of these guys. I am gonna do um, one of them in our standard form. I'll try to do one in the, uh, maybe a little bit more hybrid form, and then one in the box form. Um, I do think working your way away from the box one into more of the standard and hybrid one um, can help you set it up a little bit more organized when we get to these bigger numbers and then when we get to decimals. So for our standard form, we have 4,632 divided by 15. Okay, and so I like to use a little piece of paper so I don't overwhelm myself. 15, will that fit into a smaller number four? Er, no, it won't. Okay, move it over. Will 15 fit into 46? Yes, it will. So now we need to decide about how many times. 
So this is where we can write out our multiples. We can use that a little bit of a cover up thing. So how many times would one go into four? Well, four times. So we could try 15 times four. I think it's gonna be a little too big. One time, or this would be 20, four, five, six. 60, right? We're too big. So we need to go down one number with our four. So 15 times three is 15. Three plus one is four. We get 45. Ooh, super close. So it's going to go in three times. So we divided it in. Now I'm on M or multiply. 15 times three, we already found is 45. When I subtract, I get one left over. I check. Is one less than 15? Yes, it is. So I'm ready to oopsies, bring down my three. Okay, will 15 fit inside 13? A larger number 15 fitting inside a smaller number 13? No, it won't. So what is a number that represents no or none? It is zero, which is always a little bit tricky when zeros start to make their way in the numbers here. It doesn't mean you're done. It doesn't mean the problem is over. You get to move on and be done with it. Uh -uh. We still don't have digits. We need a digit on top of every single number in our uh, quotient dividend, sorry, for our quotient up top. So I'm not finished yet. So then I can do 15 times zero is zero. I subtract, I get 13. It's still less than 15. So now I can bring down. So my two comes down and now we have 132. So cover up method is kind of hard for our teens numbers because if I cover this up, how many times is one gonna go into 13? Well, 13 times. So the biggest digit we can put up here is nine because we're only putting one digit up there at a time with our standard form. So I can try 15 times nine because you can't, you're not gonna do 13. Nine is the biggest you can do. So nine times five is 45. Nine times one is nine plus four more is 13, right? Yes, yes, okay, I was thinking it plus five for a second. So I get 135, this is 132, bummer. Little too big, so now I need to go 15 times eight, but it gave me a good springboard spot to jump off from. Five times eight is 40, eight plus four is 12. We get 120. So I'm gonna put my eight up here. I'm gonna move this guy. And remember, we're really ignoring what's going on up there. We've already done that. This is old news. We're just worried about our 132. So I'm gonna put my 120 down below it. Two, take away zero is two, one, zero. So we have 308, remainder 12. And I want you to get in the habit of not just doing that R. So you see how I have R12? So write it small. That's good, writing it small. Get rid of that R and put it over your 15. Because that's what it is. You have 12 out of 15 left over. So we have 12 left over. We can't make another grouping of um, from the 15 when we're splitting it up. So we get 308 and 12 fifteenths. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. I will do that hybrid method. It's not easiest for my brain to do, but it is something I can challenge myself to do. So let's do 300 as our divisor. We have 3,332. That's a lot of threes there. Okay, so I need to think how many times will 30 go into 3,332? Remember, I'm looking at it from like the whole number perspective. So if I do 30 times 100, I get 3,000. I think that's a pretty good starting point, don't you? Well, I'd say so. Um, okay. So I'm going to put my 100 up here and I'll put my 3000 down here. When I subtract, we have two, three, three, zero. So now I need to do 30 into 332. Well, if I do 30 times 10, I get 300. That's a pretty good starting off point. So I'll put my 10 up here. And in the book, they've started combining these right away. But if you want to just add them up at the end, that's fine. So then we put our 300 down below. And I've got my two, my three, and my zero. So now I need to put 30 into 32. Well, I know 30 times one is 30, so it's just gonna go in one time. We subtract, we get two left over. So this is 100 plus 10 plus one is 111. So our answer is 111. And then remember, we have our remainder two, but I told you, eh, eh, we're getting rid of the R. That is 
So fourth grade, right? No, uh, well, kind of. But <laughs> we are gonna start to train ourselves to put our um, remainder over the number that we um, divide, that was our divisor. And then I can simplify this down even if I divide my top and bottom when you're simplifying and making equivalent fractions, you, uh, you have to divide the top and bottom by the same number and I would get 1 15th. So that simplified is 111 and 1 15th, um, which is our remainder there. Yep, because we have two. And I just like to double check it in there. I think on Pearson, it'll probably just have you plug in R as a remainder. And so you can just put your two, that's fine. Um, but it's good to start thinking about what's coming up and it's coming up, so. Okay, let's do one more. And I might just do the standard method for the next one. Um, really, we need to probably be picking which method that we like the best and practicing that one instead of switching back, back and forth. It's a little bit harder for me, you know, virtually on Zoom to see what you're doing and um, the steps that you need, but um, we can make it work. So here's our next one. They wrote these ones out um, kind of in equation form, and now they put this into the brackets for us. So we have um, 1,013 divided by 25. Okay, 25 is always a nice divisor because 25, 50, 75, 100, if you think about quarters, it um, you can skip count pretty well with them. So we um, are going to whoop, not overwhelm our brains, right? 25 into one, absolutely not. Will 25 go into a smaller number 10? Absolutely not. Okay, and then this is where it gets a little tricky. When your two digit divisor out here won't go into the first two digits, you got a little bit more, more math to do, right? A little bit more thinking, which is okay. We can do it, it's gonna be fine. But buckle up, you gotta do some more work. So 25 into 101, ooh, but we have 25 on our side, so that's good. Cause I can easily do, if I think about quarters and a dollar, well 25, Two quarters is 50 cents, three quarters is 75, and then four quarters, that's one dollar, um, or, you know, 100 cents. So, um, it's going to go in four times. 25 times four is 100. We subtract, we get one. Is one less than 25? You betcha. Let's go ahead and move on to our next number. So, now I have my 13, and will 25 go into 13? Uh uh can't tell you how many people would be like, well, my answer's four, I'm done, I'm out of here. That's not it. We have to say 25 won't go into 13, so what number represents no or none? Zero. Don't forget about it. You have to have a digit in your quotient for every digit in your dividend. Okay, so 25 times zero, is zero, when we subtract, we get 13. So then our remainder is 13. And remember, we can start to think about that as 13 out of 25. On Pearson, it'll probably just have you plug in 13 though. Okie dokie, superstars. I'm gonna have you try number five. Oh, look at you. You have a smaller dividend, you lucky ducks. So then we'll talk about number five in group and um, continue to practice our awesome division skills. See ya.